Our first guest presenter is Stephen Goss, terribly well known in the online in the counselling and online counselling world. Uh, I'm not going to read from his biographical notice far too long. Uh, so <laughs> there we go. But I say over to you, Stephen. We're looking forward to hearing about his research, isn't it? Making research speak for you. Something we really need to be thinking about. Okay. Um... I'll just get my presentation up. There we go. I'll do anything without PowerPoint. I was invited to come to talk about research, and I've uh, been realising over the last 24 hours or so that um, some of the things that I'm going to be wanting to say are going to be very, very familiar to some of you. I know some of the people uh, here in the room in Manchester and in the, the chat room are very experienced researchers, um, in which case some of what I'm going to say is going to be extremely familiar uh, to you. Um, and I'll actually skip over uh, a couple of my slides, I think. Um, but I've got a, a kind of a soapbox to stand on today, which is to talk about making research speak. Um, the theme of the conference being speaking the unspeakable. Um, some of the things that go on in counselling, uh, the content of counselling, the processes, some of the outcomes are very difficult to get to, to make speak. Um, and if there's something I want to have come out of today, it's uh, uh, to get more research activity generated, to get um, people to find some buzz about research which is quite a difficult thing to do. Um, I joined BACP um, as Research Development Manager um, something like 10 years ago, and my remit then was to try and create a kind of cultural shift among councillors to be more active, more pro in research, uh, and have a more positive, engaged attitude with it. Um, I think we were partially successful with that, and there's now a lot more research activity, a lot more research evidence uh, that's out there. When I took on the job to begin with, there was very, very little, really solid, good quality research. Um, and uh, there's a, um, a, a need for us to keep that process going and keep the momentum building. Um, I'm delighted to hear about research activity going on now. And the, the level of activity we've got now, I think, is very, very encouraging. Um, I'll rattle through a fair amount of uh, what I've got at a, a fair speed. Um, but do feel free to interrupt me. I'll try and keep an eye on the, the chat room. If people see things coming up in the chat room, do alert me. Um, uh, but please interrupt and take stuff in, in tangents uh, in the room as well. So the outline of what I'm going to do in the next 50 minutes. Um, I'm going to talk about some reactions to research, uh, common reactions, um, why be involved with it, um, which may be a, a, a fairly basic question for any of you who already are, um, but I raise it because uh, I come across a fair amount of resistance, just the idea of doing research um, among some uh, councillors, certainly. It's not a, a universal by any means, I want to, to generalise. Um, but I, I was once told by a, a very experienced councillor, I don't do research because I have life. Um, and there's a point to that, but we also need to do the research in order to get the professional life. Uh, it's kind of my theme today. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at what happens without it um, historically. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, one of the presenters uh, said they were going through 30 odd years of uh, work. I'm going to try and go through 150 odd years. Um, I also have a look at um, uh, what research can do for you um, and how you can make it speak for you and um, pick up some uh, examples and uh, look at some of the different types of uh, research. Um, and how different kinds of research can speak to different audiences, different kinds of people. And then I want to look at the way people can band together, and this is my, my main point about setting up practice research networks. And if I can do anything today, um, then it's uh, to foster the creation of practice research networks um, and practitioners getting together to do their research regardless of your setting, regardless of whether or not you've got backing. Um, it's not something that you need to sit on the sidelines and wait for. Um, it's kind of the theme that I'll be um, coming back to time and time again. And how you can make it speak for you. And what I'd like to do is to be able to challenge people to think about uh, what it is that uh, you want to have research say for you. And I hope we'll have some time for discussion. 
if I keep up at this pace, then we may not even need the whole 50 minutes so we can go for coffee early. <laughs> <laughs> no questions, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hear some priorities in the room. No questions. Um, it's also far too short to talk about research and in depth. Um, all I'm going to do is raise some issues, flag them up, wave them in front of you, and you can react how you will. Um, there are an awful lot of technical issues we could cover today, but probably won't if people want to raise technical issues, by all means do, and we'll see how far we can get. Um, and really, I'm just wanting to prompt thinking about it. As I say, for those of you who are already involved in research, you're already doing that. Um, I hope that uh, nobody would leave uh, this conference without wanting to be engaged with research, and um, as I say, I'd like to be able to help facilitate that. Um, and maybe some practical outcomes. Perhaps we could walk away with people wanting to create new practice research networks. The chat room's a great place for people to you know, share interests and say, shall we get together and do this? Conferences are great places to do that. Um, and coffee breaks are great times to sit down with people and say, shall we start looking at, come and grab me, talk to me as well. Right, so to start with, I'm gonna ask a question, this is where audience participation suddenly kicks in, and I'm going to put this to the, the chat room first. What's been your experience of research to date? And I'm going to to the chat room first, really because uh, I want to give you time to uh, get typing, and I know there's a little bit of lag with what we see on the, the screen here. Um, so I'm going to put that to the chat room, and I'm going to bridge the room. What's your experience of research? Have any reactions to that? Okay, Denise. <laughs> Um, well, the website I'm going to talk about later was um, uh, set up by a process of action research, and I'm five years later just writing up some aspects of that research. So right. I've got a very long, slow experience of research. So it's a long and slow, but it's having an output. <coughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's applied research with a practical output, which has been very motivating. Great. I'll have to motivate you. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Don't that. Uh, th this sort of question always makes me laugh because my experience of research I thought was zero <laughs> until uh, Dr. Handley and uh, Dr. Lenny at Manchester University pointed out to me that uh, in my previous life of doing uh, analysis on audiences in the theatre was actually research. Yeah. So in summer I kind of went back to university with a tail between my legs saying, yeah, yeah, okay, then I, I agree with you. And, now I'm heavily involved in research and, and really love it and quite an advocate for it. Right, there's been a, a real journey through that and you realise you're already doing it. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that's one of my points. Thank you. Um, I, I did a BSc in counselling at Coventry University, which I finished in 2003, and I did an undergraduate research project for that in how people um, approach, uh, how people adapt their counselling modalities to time-limited work. Right. And what was your experience of doing it? Well, when I started, I didn't know the difference between qualitative and quantitative, so it was it was very very much from the uh, from the ground up, and and part of the the course was to do a module in research, which was incredibly useful, and we had a lot of support. And although I had a full time job and a young family, and was a single parent at the time, it was quite tough going. <laughs> um, but I actually really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Right, right. Okay. So again, there's that shift from not knowing much about it and not being engaged to getting a lot out, yeah. despite all the distractions of life. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Are there any non-researchers in the room who share an experience of research? Yeah. 